Okay. Fucking. Cut out that techno fucking bullshit from the last fucking clip. Starting to piss me off a little bit. But anyway. Fucking. Gathering this next fucking. Next spiel rather than a lecture. Let me just have this. Yeah. Just fucking talking about simple tilings. Simple tilings of a plane. You know, it's a difference of symmetry, a different regularity of patterns, the notion of a different chaos order pattern in a single plane. So fucking look at different tilings. The tilings of a single plane. And from many fucking perspectives, symmetry of the tilings of a plane. So if you're a fucking professor of mathematics, you know the square tilings of a plane, right? You're supposed to be a professional. So grouping this in nine subdivisions and nine tiles inside fucking each subdivision creates the larger scale. We call this, everyone calls it, symmetry scale. So of the symmetry scale does not have rigid continuously. So looking at the bizarre scale, I'll just obtain disorder and order. The concept of being little square surrounded by eight more little squares which gives you nine little squares looking on a flat surface and it becomes the tiling of a perfect cube with nine little cubes so we cover this product square with a flat plane again with a single plane Cover it with a tile of larger eight squares. The same size as the usual nine little squares. This becomes nine times nine, which is equal to fucking eight one of course. We then cube this eighty-one top. Then I'll spin the cube. I'm turning it around, visualize it. Just visualize it in your fucking head. So to continue this forever, covering up the continued plane, the entire plane, then the nine square becomes nine squared towers cubed. Using towers, exponents. Tower cube becomes the cube's tower exponent. We can put this tower of exponents in a simple exponential function. A function of growth or decay. So imagine the domain values of X with any values plugged into it to infinity, negative, positive. Wherein f of x equals 2 to the power of x. And compute all your negative and positive range of the x, sorry, the y axis. So this fucking domain value, normal integer. But the output is in fractions or converted to decimals. Whatever.
heavy compute, where do you fucking want? Traction is better because you can flip them. For a negative exponent, it becomes a positive. Opposite. When a fraction is flipped, every math professor knows this. So we have the curve, curve of the growth, exponential function. That will express the tower exponents in its exponential function. Given f of x equals 2 to the x to the cubed. This goes tower on fucking tower. We now have our output of a decaying function. So we add an exponent to an exponent, changing to half x to the 3 ok the fucking end fucking function is f of x equals half to the x yeah that's a decaying function so this function with the output being the smaller fractions computed in that inside the top right quadrant y output fractional values have, have we, we have an asymptote, but it decreases to x to zero, but never touches the x axis. So from a normal decay function, we have an f of x equals half to the x. But x is negative five, negative four, negative three, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this domain becomes an output. The y values. One of these functions intercept well, all, all, all exponential functions in, yeah, intercept at 0, 1. It arises faster. So in this function we have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 y values. Top left quadrant. Now just visualize this. Do I cube each one of these values or do I simply tell cube the f of x equals half to the x or a 2? I want to pick out 2 from the value. But anyway, so I tell cube this x another time. And this visual simply forms. So we got half to the 2. The sum of half to the x. The extension of the pick of what I picked in a domain value randomly. So I randomly picked negative 2. Okay. So half to the negative 2. So that equals 4, and remembering this is the output of the function, which is positive, so cube this, number 4, as it was the exponent of half, in the function, and just flip the function flipping the fraction actually you're flipping it to 2 over 1 to the 4 to the power of 3 cubed again so to compute this we go 2 over 1 to the power of 4 to the power of 3 and b equals 16 then cube this as our second output value Okay, I don't know if you can fucking see this. Well, I've described it's a bit shitty, but uh... Okay, well I can see this. You see in the exponent exponential tower function coming, so... We have 16 cubed, which equals 4,000. 4,096. 
Okay. This is the number of tiles. Little squares. That turn into cubes. That flow in this top left quadrant. It flows. It expands. As a cube within a cube. Nine cubes, like explained before. Nine times nine is eighty-one. So therefore, you have eighty-four, eighty-one cubes within a cube, which is weird. I mean, it's fucking weird. Okay. So, single tiling that of comprised of a nine cubes times nine again, it equals eighty-one. I just you know what I'm so. See it somewhat through the fog. But anyway, in a cubic tiling, this is how many times a cube can spin around in a single tiling. It's a mass of cubes. They spin around in this fucking dimension. One plane. Well, you pull that imaginary dimension out. Okay, as the function is tower upon tower, like I've been talking about fucking this amount of times too much, the whole single plane can hold a great number of cube tiles. When this plane is imaginary pulled apart, so pulling the plane apart, just imagine Cubes within cubes. In this decay function, it indicates that a half-life of volume area in this cube, maybe the cubes get smaller and smaller. And cube expanded, maybe in the fourth dimension. The growth shows that the cubes get larger and larger. That is the growth function. Where exponential can be decay or growth. Yes, decay or growth. So, cubes get larger and larger. It's in the, yeah, that is in the growth function cubes will get larger and larger, but still, within them, there is more cubes, so it's kind of funny, it's a landslide, a landslide of just particles, can be described as electrons, but I'll get to that later. So it comprises cubic tilings inside them. We start with nine tilings. Yeah, la di da. It's 81. You know that. Then 81 squared equals 6,561. Then 6,561 squared equals. 43,046,721 Then 46,721 So then we prime factorise these numbers Gives you smaller values in the cube density I don't know why but I just call it density This is my own terminology and philosophy It's density how a single plane can expand and exist pockets of anything, pockets of electrons. Well, for example, in a physical XYZ dimension, the growth density can be linked to an electron cloud. The chemists, you all know what an electron cloud is, right? That's good. 
Now each cube within a cube can hold a positive or negative subshell or an element of hydrogen. So the element of hydrogen an atomic number of one, one subshell, the ground state of configuration of one. So one electron can spin in many directions. In the electron cloud orbit, they spin in that orbit around the hydrogen atom. So we put the hydrogen atom at the center of origin on an X, Y, Z plane. So I used an exponential growth function with hydrogen. One to the X as hydrogen as an electron. It's the most common element, hydrogen. Yeah, it's always there, it's always in water, etc. Fucking ethanol, fucking water to ethanol to uh, everything. Everything is hydrogen based. It's uh, the most common element. So imagine a cube tile in a plane that's density of a cube inside a cube. This is coming to be fucking bullshit. Anyway, it's uh, exponential bullshit. But uh, bullshit grows. So, maybe an order pattern. An order of pattern. There's nine tilings in a flat square. And again, nine cube tilings. A cube within a cube. The density of the cube is formed my equation. So it's a simple equation, you can form your own fucking equations. D is 9 to the 3 to the 3 to the 3 to the 3, which tower ones for infinity. The space is just the supreme number is always 9. Then I tower cubed at infinity, infinity. Tower cube, infinity. Well, I don't know if anyone's done that. It was possible. So we had our decaying function. Now we find that the cube tilings, I'm starting to harp on about these cube tilings, but uh, we can find a spin. I found that. Now the spin in all quadrants. So an electron can be in the first orbital subshell. It can be in four thousand and ninety-six cubic tiles. Consider them particles. Little squares, like graphics on your um, ancient old fucking Atari. The ancient old Atari. You visualize those graphics on your TV. Squares. Spinning around. Swarming around like bees. And the queen bee gets out. Moves this hot in her entire colony of bees, migrates to another location. Think of that. So, we've got 4,096 cubic tilings, and that's how many times it spins. So, we'll just time, times this by four because we've got four quadrants now. Um, X, Y, coordinate. Okay, it gives you 16,384 places where an electron is in one of these cubic tiles. 
Look at this as an exponential decay. Electron cloud is inverse. The electron spins inward to a negative half. Or the inverse of an exponent is the log. We all know that the inverse of an exponent is log, logarithm, natural log, whatever. So at the subshell level, I've computed. I've got 2 over 1 to the negative 4 equals 16. Then 16 cubed is 4096. That is the amount of spins in which the electron can be. Can be. Well, the inverse of it is the outwards. Spin outwards computed that it was 1954.288 times. Then we multiply each number. It spins by four each because we have four quadrants. So we got 4096 4, times four and the inward spin was 1945 times 4. So we got 4096 times 4 equals 16,084. And 1954 times 4 equals 7,116. Pretty boring shit. Just some boring computations. Okay, so, so therefore, 16,384 inward and the inverse of the exponent was the log and it becomes the outward spin but this only the decay function in the top left quadrant so it's only the top left quadrant and uh, that's as far as got with that Many fractions can be computed. The growth, the decay, as I have explained, and then the mission is, is to express the logarithm. So now hydrogen has a ground state of s to the sub half with one subshell. Its ground state configuration is 1.00794. Its ionization energy in elementary charge is 13.5984. An electron mass, which is 9.1094 times 10 to the, to the negative 31 scientific notation in kilograms so these cubic tilings must be in proportion to the mass of the ele an electron that's pretty fucking weird uh, the electron may occupy many cube tilings this change changes everything so I have nine cube tiling one mass of an electron Nine cube tiling. We simply divide nine cube by nine point one zero nine four times ten to, to the negative thirty one, which is the mass of an electron. But it will only give me a ratio. So we all assume that an electron is spherical just like the planet Earth. Well, we all know that the fucking volume equals 4 over 3 times pi times radius cubed. So we just try to take the mass of an electron. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to find volume of an electron because we do not have a radius. And 
now I've come to a realization that I've got a ratio this ratio to be continued the next will be the same process of tiles but I'll, I'll do tri triangles this time it's another symmetry of scale so start with triangles in a congruent way with them selves but uh, we can talk and talk and talk a lot of shit but however that's my attempt at electron spin